Howdy gang, for this video I'm looking at Star Wars Pinball for the Nintendo Switch. Released by Zen Studios back in 2013 on a couple of different platforms. Since then it's had a bunch of different expansions, and eventually it was ported to the Nintendo Switch. And that happened back in 2019. It's a pinball game, so if you like pinball, you might like this one. If you like pinball and Star Wars, you're probably really going to like this one. I scored this copy used for $15, and for $15 this one felt like a no-brainer. Even a subpar pinball experience in a modern console is probably worth 15 bucks. I think this is probably going for about 20 new right now. And if you like pinball, this one is actually a really good value for the price. I do have two reasonably basic gripes with this game. First, they want you to sign in to get to the leaderboards. Like, they really want you to sign in. If you don't, every couple of menus that you access, they ask you again. And again. And again. And I didn't want to sign in, but this kept popping up and it was driving me nuts. Eventually I did, but it kind of upset me. I wish there was a standard across all games based on stuff like this. They ask you once, and if you say no, just leave me alone. I imagine if the leaderboards go down, or more importantly, when they go down five years from now, or if Nintendo evolves their eShop, you're going to have to fight with this reminder, I bet, over and over again down the road. I think my second gripe with this game is also kind of, I guess it's, maybe it's petty, but the voice acting. Clearly, they're using different actors here to voice these classic characters, and every time I hear some famous line being spoken by a different actor, I'm disappointed. In this day and age, to get a license for a property and not get the original audio clips from the source material, that's really unfortunate. In some cases, I would rather not have the audio clips at all than to hear somebody that is clearly not the original actor. As far as gameplay, this is an interesting mix of realism and video game. I did a review sometime back on a game called Stern Pinball for the Switch, which was a game that went out of its way to make authentic pinball tables, and basically they digitized real-life tables. As such, they're really shooting for the original feeling of the pinball table, and the tables behaved like the physical games that they, they were depicting. It was really good. Here, they look like actual live pinball tables, but they aren't actually representative of a physical pinball game that already exists. They're just designed to look and play like they could be based on real tables. But they're also infused with extra graphics and things that can't and wouldn't happen in an actual physical pinball game. Like, I don't know, a lightsaber starts up and launches a ball, or a spaceship flies up and off the table, or characters move around back and forth. Stuff like that. So you have a mix of realism and also video game elements. Kinda like that, and I think it really works here. They also don't seem to take it too far. It still feels like, for the most part, these could be real pinball tables. They have digital displays that you would see on an actual table when your score gets higher. They have regular bumper physics, they have the types of sound clips you would expect, and sometimes they have mini-games as well. All this with standard pinball physics, I suppose. It's all working great together. Of course, you can just grab a table and play like a standard pinball game, which is nice. Expected. Classic play is something that you naturally need to have with a pinball game, and you definitely have it here. Uh, they also have other game modes, which was actually something I was not expecting. You get head-to-head -head local play, you get online tournament modes, and they also added a career mode, which is quite interesting. Career mode basically has you progress through a specific selection of tables, and you're trying to hit certain feats and scores along the way. As you progress, you're going to unlock different force powers and talents, which can be used to change some of the table gameplay basics. Mostly it's score bonus type stuff. This isn't really needed, but it's a welcome addition. It helps make it feel different. In career mode, I ran into some different game types as well, and I found myself really enjoying these differences. A standard pinball table, obviously, is limited to the number of balls that you can play with. Usually that's three, and then the game is over. Here, there are other game types. Maybe the game only has two pinballs, and you need to get a high score with that. Or maybe they have unlimited pinballs, but instead, you have a five-minute time limit. One of the modes makes it so you can only use the flippers 200 times which is something I wasn't expecting, but something that I really enjoyed. You have to be really careful with the buttons you're pressing. I like it. It's definitely different, 
And it's, I think, little changes like this that make you really stay on a table longer. You don't have to do career mode, of course, but I did like it more than I thought I would. As far as the number of tables on this cartridge, there are way more than I would have expected. 19 tables in total. And each table is catered towards a specific movie or show. And they all have differences in terms of their visuals, of course, the ramp layouts, sounds, scoring, that sort of stuff. Some of the tables are going to be focused on the Rebels, and some are going to be focused on the Empire, and some of the tables are probably going to be a little obscure for the standard Star Wars fan. Now, these tables don't have all the properties available, as the game is a few years old now. I think the latest property here is the table from the Solo movie, which is a, a movie that came out three or four years back. Out of all the tables, I was probably most surprised to see the Rebels table, which was an animated show that came out back in 2014. I can't say I've actually seen that particular show yet. I hear it's good, but I personally have a hard time getting into these animated Star Wars shows. It's a good pinball table, though, that's for sure. This game handles decent enough on the Switch in handheld mode, and it's nice that you can change the angle of the table on the fly using the X button. It's an immediate effect, and it's pretty great. You get a few different viewing angles, too, that you can switch to. I think there's like eight or nine of them. You can also press the minus button, which will change the entire table orientation. Then you can actually hold the Switch console sideways. It's going to give you more real estate to work with in the handheld mode. It handles okay in this direction, and you can also use the touch screen to trigger the flippers. Not bad. Personally, I prefer this one plugged into a television using an external controller. I think it looks great on a big screen, and for me, the external controllers are just more comfortable to hold than what you get on the Switch by default. Overall, I think if you like pinball, there's a lot of value to this one. With all the different modes, all the settings, and the massive table variety. I mean, 19 tables is a lot. If you can get this game for 15 or 20 bucks, this is a good deal. Well, that's all I have today for Star Wars Pinball for the Nintendo Switch. Thanks for stopping by to take a look, and please like and subscribe if this is your sort of thing. Hope to catch you on another video.